Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at the beautiful add-on known as Curve Upgrade Pro plus Magic Curve. Now, this tool is made available by Job Week, and for those who like to take a look at this, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can grab it. Now, the beautiful thing about this tool is it allows you to neatly create arrays on curves and at the same time allows you to also be able to control this instance so many things around your curves and this can happen in a couple of clicks now with this said we're going to dive directly into blender to take a look at how this one actually works so with blender simply open right here all you need to do once you purchase this add-on is to go over to edit go over to preference then go over to your add-ons click on install add-ons and install the zip file now with that installed if you press n on your keyboard you'd notice that we have the curve array right here and this is how easy it is now getting started with this is as easy as creating a surface so let's go ahead and explore that magic curve so once you create an object or you have an object that you've created it doesn't matter if it's a model or if it is something that you just simply imported and you would like to create a curve from that model this is something that you can easily do so if you jump over to your editing section go over to the vector section which is the first one click and select then hold down alt and click to select the simple loop and with that loop selected if you go all the way down within the curve array you can click on curve from loop to create a simple loop. Now, once you're done with creating the loop, you can proceed to the peak part and click on store selected curve. And that way you will be able to store that curve. Now to actually make things more interesting, let's proceed to also add Suzanne the monkey right here, just to check it out. So with this here, we can now instance the monkey head and make an array around the curve. So to do that, we need to select the head and then store the selected object. Once we do that, next thing which we need to do is click on make it and that is how easy it is. You notice that we have the make it parameter and with the make it parameter, we can increase the number of counts. And that is how simple it is for you to proceed to start making these things. And in terms of making orientations and also tweaking this to your liking, all of these things can be done super easily. So for example, right here where we have our rotation, we can choose to make rotation based off a progressive rotation like this. And once you proceed to look at it, you would notice that this progressively just goes all the way through. So you can notice that, right? So as this progresses all the way through, and this can also work alongside with things like location and also scale. So in terms of scale as well, depending on how much you would like to scale this, you can choose to do that. One other thing which you would notice from here is we have the object cloning type. Now within the object cloning type, we can switch the object cloning type to be real instances, real instances light, and also the usual copy. And down here, there is also a different type of spacing which you can choose to work with, which include fill by count, fill by offset, and also free. Now the free one will definitely come in handy for a lot of you guys, especially if you like to control the number of counts that you have, and you also love to control the offset. Now in this way, you have full control on how your arrays would look like and how you would like to make them presented. So what about trying to add multiple stuff onto your array? What if you like to have multiple objects instance on an array? How do you go about that? Now to do that is super, super simple. So let's believe that this is a model which we've also created. So if we like to have multiple stuff on the curve, what we can do is simply select this as well and then store the selected object. Now you notice that the stored object that we have are two and if we go all the way down if you don't want to mess up with the settings okay if you go all the way down you can click on make it and automatically this would be applied here now you probably wouldn't notice anything happening because you know our count is set to one but if we start increasing the count you would see that we have these bad boys right over here so these are one of those cool things that you might want to do and in terms of playing with randomization, in cases of rotation, translation, and scale, you can proceed to do that. So let's say for this example, I'm setting this to negative 180, and I'm also gonna set this one to, let's say, negative 45. If we proceed to go down here where we have the seed and we start playing with the seed, we can have various randomization of what we're trying to create. So this way you have full control of how you like things to look like and you can proceed to do some very impressive things for yourself. Moving forward, let's take a look at a very good example. So traditionally, once you're trying to create an array on a curve, what you do is you create the object itself, create the curve which you like to array on, go over to the modifier of the object and then throw in an array. And then once you throw in an array, you now set the fit type to fit by curve, select the curve which you like to array on and then you need to add a curve modifier so that we can deform this object within the curve now once you select that by default what you notice is this and you can notice that some parts right here are either squashed in or you know some other parts are stretched out 
and this in turn actually deforms your mesh really bad this isn't what you want what you want is actually something that works so for this example what we're going to do is make a copy move this all the way there create a brand new version of susan and have this object selected store this object select the curve store the curve and hit on make it and once we hit on make it we can increase the number of counts that we want and you would notice that we have exactly what we are going for so in this case there is no deformation and this is definitely going to come in very handy to give you that smooth and proper looking array that you've always wanted and imagine trying to create these on an object for example columns which you don't want them to deform and getting this kind of result versus this kind of result i mean the difference is extremely going to be clear once you start working with this so with this here let's also take a look at something else so the next which we want to take a look at is how do you proceed to instance several objects and also control how those objects get instanced so in this case i'm also going to go in and grab suzanne right there and also grab a simple cone and let's also get one more so i'm just going to add a sphere let's add the uv sphere and let's move the one out so once we have this there let's also proceed to add a part so part looks good so i'm just going to go in and add that part and let's scale this part all the way up so let's uh scale this let's move it over to this position and scale it okay so now that we have this part scaled what we can do is if we press n on the keyboard go back to the curve array pro we can store this select all of this one two and three and four and store all of them so once we store all of them and select this object and click on make it you would notice that we have all of them added okay they are all added and they all have the same 50 50 chance now how do you calculate how much chances these things get how do you randomize this so to get this happening what we need to do is go over to the object editor and click on the object editor now with the object editor selected you would notice that we have a number of counts that we will get per instancing and you also notice that we all have them set to main group so for example if we like to have two suzans or maybe three suzans and two spheres every single time we instance we can get this one ready and click on okay so instead of having the count set to one let's actually set this one to 10 and then proceed to click on make it now once we click on make it you would notice that we have three suzans two spheres and you know it goes on and on so if we increase this you'd also notice that we have the same thing three suzans two spheres three suzans all the way to the end if you also want to randomize how these things work you can also choose to do that if we go over to the object editor we can choose to set this one to random group so all of this are going to be in the random group and within this random group we can choose how many chances they get to work with so we can set one set two set three and set four have all of them there and we can increase the chances that they all have so in this case the chances of one appearing over the other actually increases so in this case Susan appearing at every instance is, is going to be 57.1 percent over the rest and for the sphere we could say we would like the sphere to happen twice and maybe for the cube and also for the cylinder we can keep it the way they are and once we're done click on ok and then click on make it now once we click on make it and we proceed to increase this you would notice that we're having more chances of suzanne appearing after every instancing compared to the cube and also compared to the cylinder and this way you can have more controls of it as you can also go over to the seed section and change the seed to get some very nice variation and randomization while trying to create some things like this so this doesn't stop here you can use this for you know things like grasses some necklaces you can use this for columns depending on the kind of debris that you like to have within your scene you can randomize this and also control these things by the curve and that's about it and for those who like to learn more about this and probably you've been looking for that perfect curve array tool that you can work with then this one is right here and you can take advantage of working with it tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section link to this is going to be in the description link to the documentation as well is also going to be in the description so do well to check these things out and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update and if like see you guys again with your tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace